Greetings guys, gals, non-binary pals, and welcome back to another video. I fell down a rabbit hole the other day of alpha males because what else are you gonna do, you know? Um, and I ended up on this one account called How to Beast. And I don't know how I've not made a video about this man already. Um, at least I don't think I've made a video about him already, but today I wanted to do that because we need to do that. Um, but before we get into it, I would like to say a massive thank you to today's patron of the day, Taylor. I appreciate you and all of your support so much. So thank you so much for joining. If anyone else would like to become a patron, you go to patreon.com slash savvycat. Click the top link in the description. It starts as little as one pound a month and I appreciate it greatly. Um, yeah, so basically How to Beast is what, like a red pillar who, you know, hates women, but like pretends to like them. You know, he loves what women do for him, but he doesn't actually like women. You know, he likes feeling good about himself by just making himself feel superior to other men. I always find it so funny with these alpha males because like their whole thing is just trying to delude themselves into thinking everything they've done is worth it. <laughs> They're kind of like, no, see, I am the best man because because if I'm not, then why did I make myself miserable my whole life? You know, like they have to they have to pretend that they're the best purely because otherwise they have to accept how miserable they are. But yeah, anyway, let's get into some of his TikToks. Three more low key red flags in women. Number one, when you're hanging out with her, her phone is always like this. It's reason one, they're being polite and they're not trying to be distracted by their phone. But if it's someone who actively checks their phone, but otherwise it's down like this, she likely doesn't want you to see the notification screen. Why would that be? Well, likely she has some notifications coming from dating apps or text messages that are probably from some other dudes. Or, or hear me out here, I don't want you to see that Felix is spamming me on Bubble. <laughs> I don't want you up in my business about why Chan is sending me 10 messages. You know, like that's none of your business. Jokes aside, not joking. Maybe, maybe my mom is texting me or maybe she's saying stuff that I don't want you to read, you know? Maybe my fa face has looked at my phone for a second and uh, now it's unlocked and you can see what my mother is saying to me. Maybe she's saying personal things, I don't know. You know, maybe my friend is messaging me like ranting about shit. It's none of your business what's happening on my phone. I always, always, no matter who I'm with, no matter what I'm doing, my phone is face down. It's to be polite, yes, but also because what happens on my phone is none of your fucking business. The fact that you jump straight to cheating is like ridiculous. No, maybe just like my stuff is my stuff. My things are my things, okay? You have no right. You have no right to know who I'm talking to or what notifications I'm getting. You just have to fucking trust me, bro. I don't need you seeing my email confirmation from whatever impulsive purchase I made recently. Like it's none of your business. It's really none of your business. All right, that's why my phone is face down. Number two, she really, really enjoys nightlife. Look, it's not a problem from time to time, you guys go out together, you dance together, she dances with her friends, but if every weekend she's going out with her friends and not with you, it's probably because she enjoys being in this environment where she's being approached and noticed and seen by other men. Or, or she enjoys spending time with her friends. <laughs> or she just likes, being with her friends and like, yes, being in that environment. But I promise you, just because you and your favorite part of going clubbing is approaching women and talking to women, that's not our favorite part. In fact, I would say that the worst part of clubbing is the men. Don't approach me. Don't look at me. Don't talk to me. I am here for a good time with my friends because I like hanging out with my friends. And it's like, I'm not here for the men. I'm not here for male attention. I know that's how you live your life. It's not how I live mine. Being like, she probably only enjoys going clubbing every weekend so that like, cause she likes men looking at her. God, you don't know anything, bro. You don't know anything about women, clearly, clearly. Because like, that's, that's not really anyone's favorite part. Especially not people who are in relationships, right? Like that's not, that's not the favorite part. In fact, a lot of the time when men approach, you kind of like move away into your friend group. Like, hey, I'm pretending that this man doesn't exist right now. 
And that's kind of how it goes. Um, so you're reading this all wrong. This sounds like projection. Number three, she does not have a good relationship with her family. Some people don't have amazing support from their family and that's no fault of their own. But these people tend to have a bit more trauma that they carry with them from when they're younger. And some people work through that and become much stronger because of it. But a lot of people, they're still dealing with that trauma. It doesn't mean she's a bad person, but she may not be in the best place mentally to be in a relationship. Okay, well, this point's just stupid and insensitive <laughs> like i'm sorry working through the trauma doesn't mean you're going to then go and have a good relationship with your family right like it doesn't mean i'm gonna go and have a good relationship with my family and also i am sorry but i absolutely hate when other people who are not the person who has struggled with the trauma themselves say they're stronger for it Fuck right off, bro. That is not your place to say that. You are not allowed to come in here and validate someone else's trauma to make yourself feel good and less uncomfortable. Yeah? You can't do that. I am allowed to look at my trauma and be like, it made me stronger because that is a coping mechanism. I have to look at the silver linings in order to get through it because like, otherwise what's, what's the fucking point, right? Um, you aren't allowed to do that because what happened is terrible. What happened is awful. It's sad. And there's nothing that justifies that or makes it okay. I don't care how strong it made me. I would have been better off without it happening, right? Don't say to anyone, you're stronger for it. Don't ever say that. It's incredibly insensitive. I know you weren't even saying this directly to someone, but like, just don't say it, period. And also like, I'm sorry, but like, you can still be in relationships while having trauma and while not like having the greatest mental health. You know, you can still have thriving and healthy relationships. You just have to have good communication and boundaries and like understanding of one another. I mean, you're probably not fit to date someone who has trauma. So like, I guess, yeah, you probably shouldn't be dating someone with trauma, but I wouldn't call that a red flag. I'd just say you're unequipped to date someone or even have any sort of relationship with someone who is still working through stuff, you know? That's that's your own fault. That's not a red flag from the other person. That's just, that's like a preference. That's just something that you are not equipped for. Don't make those the same thing. Don't make those the same thing. Here are the top three OS. decisions for ourselves this is so funny i am obsessed with like this man is so funny because he takes any excuse he can to like insert a clip of him at the gym and it's so funny i was scrolling through his account for a couple hours yesterday and the amount of times he just like would sprinkle in like and work out here's me at the gym look here's me at the gym he just tries to put it in everywhere and it's really funny but i <laughs> i would like to say a few things here number one it's, this isn't a new thing. Sex work is literally, it's the oldest job ever. Prostitution is the oldest job ever. And I know OnlyFans isn't prostitution, right? But I'm saying like forming these relationships, like sexual relationships with strangers, um, with women and giving them money is not a new thing. That's literally been around since forever. And then like, I just want to know, do you watch porn? Do you watch free porn? Do you watch porn on like, Pornhub or any other site where you don't have to pay because why is if you do why is that okay because a lot of the time these men say it they're kind of like why would you pay for OnlyFans if you could just have access to porn for free it's like well one you're still contributing to the industry existing you are still kind of like giving those women and those people money 
Um, but you're going through an exploitative system a lot of the time, at least most of the time on like Pornhub and such, like a lot of that is illegal or stolen. A lot of it is stolen and re-uploaded. You know, a lot of it comes from companies that are abusing their workers and are abusing women. And it's just like not a very good or safe environment. And you're watching that and you're fine with that because you're not giving them money. You're just watching the ads, which is giving them money, right? OnlyFans is a way that you are able to directly support those workers. You know, they are not being exploited or abused. They are doing it because they choose to, not because they have to a lot of the time. You know, sometimes people do desperate things in uh, financial situations where they need to, which isn't cool. In general, it's much less exploitative if they are doing it for themselves and not under an agency. Like, it's a much better way to consume porn is giving it to people who are making their own decisions, calling their own shots, and you are directly supporting the creators. I don't think that's a bad thing. And like forming parasocial relationships with them is like, sure, I understand a little bit odd, especially because a lot of the men who sort of do that can cross some boundaries that should not be crossed. Um, but in general, I don't really think there's anything wrong with OnlyFans. And again, yeah, you are right. It is supply and demand, but like, who cares? <laughs> Who cares, you know? Also like use all the time that you're simping to go work out at the gym. That's the funniest thing ever. That's so funny. That's fucking hilarious. Five of your guys' top Instagram models are DMing me right now. I've only been with five women since exiting prison and making two million plus a month. Most people, they'd be dropping in stacks to just go something. And that ain't who I am. I will never be that man. Women show their love by submitting. Men show their love by committing. That's not what's happening. They're f***ing it all up. I enter you, b Like, what the f They hate if I would say that word, I don't give a how I talk. It's not even a derogatory way. I believe in love between one partner and the person he's gonna spend his life with. That's what I believe in. This is a vile video. Firstly, saying p drop money to go fuck something? Just like something, like an object, like bro, straight up bro. Like seeing sex workers as objects is such a horrible issue that is way too real. And everything he said in here is just like, it's, it's, firstly, I don't think you are DMing five top Instagram models. You might be DMing them. I don't think they're replying to you. Um, and I also don't believe you're making $2 million a month. I'm sorry. I'm fucking sorry, you're not making $2 million a month. What do you do, bro? How are you doing that? Because I don't think you have an answer because you cap. You are absolutely not making $2 million a month. And you're saying this bullshit, you're using, like you're saying that you have like control and power over women because you enter her. What is wrong with you? That's so gross, so gross. Some of these dudes who try to give relationship advice, I'm like, bro, can you shut the f up? You look like an idiot. They're like, why? I'm like, you have a four. She acts differently than a 10. She has been in line forever. She's not trying to raise up. Mm -hmm. There's a big difference. A lot of these entrepreneurs have really ugly chicks. Yeah. And I it's see, horrible. I see you see it a lot. Don't you have money? Even bro? if they're not giving dating advice, it's still like you're you're trying to give advice, advice on something, yeah, right? And, like, advice. and how can you really, it's almost the same as like, you're just really out of shape. Yeah, but now it's the same thing. The same idea. You're saying you're a closer and your chick's ugly. There's no pride in one area of your life. Yeah. Hey, hey, did you know there's a few things of like, uh, one, everyone finds different things attractive. Everyone finds different body types attractive, different bone structure attractive, different, everyone finds different things attractive. And also, uh, some people are attracted to who people are as people and not just how they look, you know? Like, Sometimes people are dating someone who you might deem unattractive, um, but they find really beautiful and they really like spending time with. Um, maybe they make them happy, they make them laugh, they make them feel comfortable and safe. You know, those are the important parts of a relationship. Looking at someone and deciding that they aren't allowed to give advice on anything because their girlfriend is someone you don't deem attractive is the most wild take. Ever. I don't think you're very attractive. Like, I'm, I like, how good do you view yourself? Are you holding yourself like a 10? Because me personally, as someone who is attracted to men, I don't find you attractive. 
Does that hurt your ego? Do a lot of other women find you attractive? Probably, probably. Do other women rate you as a 10? Maybe. I absolutely don't though. And you see, that's how it kind of works from everyone, you know? Like we're all attracted to different things and just, oh my God. <sighs> A lot of y'all are not gonna wanna hear this. I see so many guys out here who've just given up on their lives. And if you're one of these guys who's just decided I'm not gonna date women anymore because maybe I'm gonna put my trust into this girl and she's gonna cheat on me or divorce me. Or maybe you're angry at women because you're ugly and they give you no attention. But here's the thing, if you just give up then you're a loser. Think about it, if this is how you treat your dating life, what's gonna happen when you face a little bit of pain or resistance in your career? You're gonna give up. And then you're never going to change your situation in life. You're never gonna level up your money, your dating life, your friend circle, your body, because it's always gonna be an excuse Excuse just to stop and I already know there's gonna be an army of guys below this video defending why dating is not worth it and shit like that but ask yourself do you want to be part of that group of men or do you want to be part of the group of men who are choosing to improve despite the pain and all the bullshit because pain and suffering that's all part of life without that your life's just gonna be super boring anyway I mean firstly love the gym videos very amusing but I mean like Yes, without pain and suffering, your life can be a bit boring, you know? You have to let yourself love and like that can mean hurt. That is true. However, I find it so ridiculous that they center their entire life around like money and women. Like that's really sad to me. I'm so sad for them on like, they don't have close friendships. They don't have like bonds with people. And they also don't view women and their partners as people they're friends with either. So they just live really lonely lives. They don't let anyone close to them. They don't open up. They don't let themselves feel emotions. They like, he didn't prioritize like friends there. He, just talking about how you need to like level up your body, level up your money, level up your dating game. Like that's, those are arguably three of the least important things. The best part of a relationship is the bond that you have. It's the friendship that should be at the core of the relationship. Like it's wild to me, wild to me that like you don't value that. It's so sad. Do women find feminine men attractive? Absolutely not. How come? No woman wants to feel like she has to lead the relationship, that she has to be the provider and wear the pants and set all the rules. And that's what's gonna happen if you have a feminine guy in a relationship. Yeah, I think men historically have been the provider financially, but also just the protector in terms of physical strength. Usually a feminine man you would not associate with also being very strong and having those capabilities. Exactly. The sneak gym photo at the end there, it's so funny. <laughs> All the little photos they're including in these are very, very amusing. Um, but I love this because speak for yourself, firstly. I love using Harry Styles as being like, no, what? women don't like Harry Styles. Women don't want Harry Styles because you're just wrong. Like globally, astronomically wrong. Harry Styles is one of the most like desired men by women that out there right now. Like a lot of the men that are like the, have the highest number of women fasting over them are feminine men. Like, <laughs> like be so for real, be so for real. Like 95% of all the men that I have crushes on are feminine men. And like that goes for so many women. I, as I like said at the start of this video, I think that it's genuinely just a way for them to feel better about the amount that they have dedicated their lives to being this like hyper-masculine man. They have to say that women only like masculine men and they'll only date women who agree, who are only attracted to masculine men because they have to convince themselves that they've been hurting themselves their entire life for no reason. They push themselves to the limit. They force themselves to not have emotions. They force themselves to the gym all the time because they think that's what women want. And then the idea that it's not what women want is too much for them because why else have they made themselves miserable this whole time? I also find it funny about working out at the gym a lot because like, hey, newsflash, bro. Did you know that like really muscular men has never been an ideal body type for women? That's the ideal body type for men. Like that's what men think women want, but like overall, it's not. <laughs> like it's not not what women want, right? Like I don't think people are complaining about like having a muscular body type, but it's not the 
primary ideal body type that these men think women like think it is, which I find so amusing. I find it so funny. Like hypermasculine men are not the most attractive men to most people. And like women aren't looking for providers and protectors anymore. You know, the reason that that was a thing is because like in the past is because we weren't granted the rights to be able to like do anything for ourselves, you know? Anyway, anyway, I just think it's so funny being like, women don't like feminine men ever, never. That's not a thing. What do women want in a man? I think they want a leader. They want someone that can provide for them financially, emotionally, somebody that can make them feel safe and that can be a good father figure. And in turn, what do women bring to the table? Well, I think she brings her support, you know, wanting to raise a family, take care of the household, finding other ways to contribute and, and support the man. I think a lot of women in 2023 would disagree with you and say that that's like too classic of gender roles. I mean, if that's not what they want, they can go find something else. But this is just from my perspective. But I also feel like you can have your career and, and be a strong, independent woman if you want. But a lot of guys aren't attracted to that. I'm glad you found each other, I guess. You know, if this is the dynamic that makes you guys happy, then... Good for you, fine, you you do you. Um, but like speaking on behalf of all women and all men is so wild. I don't understand why they think that they are the voice of everyone. Like most, like I don't know the split, right? I surround myself by people who are similar to me and everyone that I know disagrees with this whole thing entirely. Like making a woman's entire personality and the only thing she brings to the table being support for her boyfriend is so upsetting. It's so upsetting. Just being like an extension of your boyfriend sucks. It sucks. It's so awful. And like, you are so much more than that. <sighs> I'm glad at least she's like, if you don't want that, then go find something else. Um, but then the whole like, but most men aren't attracted to that implies that, you know, she's expecting people to change or wanting people to change. And it's this thing of like, don't change yourself and don't change your values just to get a partner. You know, it's not worth it. It's not worth sacrificing your values and who you are as a person in order to be in a probably unhappy relationship, you know? I think we put way too much value on relationships, like on romantic relationships, when like there are more important things in the world, you know? Have close friendships. It's fine to be single. It's totally fine to be by yourself. It's honestly better to be by yourself than it is to be in a relationship where you have sacrificed so much of yourself. You know? First date should never last for how long? Well, that's the next thing I was gonna get into because your dating style, I disapprove of. Oh, oh, I'm complete opposite. I went on the first date with Taylor. We were at that restaurant for four hours. But I would say this is also an example of like top 1% man. You can get away with some things because you're really like kind of like pre-approved. You have like the social proof and the status so you can get away with doing things that aren't optimal. Like it's not optimal to go on a four hour, five hour first date. I don't think about that like that. I don't think about this like game plan or whatever. But what's gonna lead us to the highest chance of us having like a fun, casual time where we actually get to know each other on a good level. For me, if it's going well and we're conversing and I can tell that she is reciprocating the enjoyment of the experience as much as I am. Let's just keep it going. Like, why cut it short and be like, yeah, let me cut it off make you want me more. I'm not like that. Well, but dating is a game. Even when you look at like animals, dating is a little bit I get game. it, but I've never played by this game. This just makes me ask the question, how long did their dates typically last? Because I don't think I've ever been on a date much shorter than that, if I'm being completely honest. My, like, dates are usually quite like There's a lot to talk about. You have a lot to talk about with the people that you're going out with. My dates always last a long time. I've gone on dates that have lasted, like, eight hours. You know, there's a lot to talk about. I also have no idea how to leave <laughs> situations or things ever, even if I'm kind of wanting to leave. I will stay for an extra two hours because I don't know. I don't have an excuse to leave. I don't really know how to end interactions with people. But like in general, yeah, dates are usually that long. How how long, how long are dates typically? How long are dates that you would all go on? To be fair, a lot of the dates that I used to go on, I would end up like spending the night. So that kind of makes it longer, but we would be out for several hours anyway. Like, I don't know, I went on like a date recently and we like 
got coffee and then went to the museum and then got lunch. And in total, I think it was like six hours and it would have been longer, but we had places to be. Like, <laughs> that's kind of like, you just talk and get to know each other and like exist. And I don't know why you would cut that short. Like the other guy said, like, why would you cut that short if it's going well? And then him being like, you have the status and you've got to be like a top 1% male though. You can like get away with that. No, I will do that with anyone, really. Unless I like really, unless it's like not going well and I don't like you. Like if we're getting along, I will stay for hours because I love getting to know people. As long as we, like, if we have that connection, it doesn't matter who you are, your status, what you look like or whatever. It's like, if there is that sort of connection that we have, I will stay and we will talk. I don't know why you have to make it into a game. Like I'll leave and then she'll want me more. No, that's not even, that's not even true. <laughs> that's like, not even true. If you're leaving in the middle of like a good conversation, I'm gonna go home and be like, did I say something? That was kind of weird. Dating is a game. Dating's not a game. Dating's not a game. It's it's just a thing that you do. You don't have to make it a game. Please stop playing games with people. Please. You match with a hot girl on a dating app, the conversation's even going well, and then she does this. So before we hang out, I think we should get to know each other on here a little bit more. Now, there's two ways that you can take this. The first way, you play along and you say, yeah, okay. What else do you want to know? Let's keep it real. Where do you think that's going to lead you? As a girl, I can tell you, she's just going to use you for validation while she goes on a date with another guy that's not going to put up with her games. So all you got to do to become the guy that she actually goes on the date with is you draw the line. You just tell her, honestly, that's what the date would be for. Don't ask a question. Don't say anything else. See how she responds. Or, or hear me out here. Safety. Safety. Do you know how many Tinder dates end with murder? <laughs> more than more than there should be. Do you know how many Tinder dates end with assault? Quite a few. Yeah, quite a few. Safety. I don't want to be going out with an effective stranger. I do want to know you a bit more. I also don't want to go out with you and then find out that you are someone who calls himself a high value male. I, I don't want to go out with someone and then find out on the date that they're like a Zionist or <laughs> that they're homophobic or that they vote conservative. You know, like these are things that I wanna know before I waste my time going out with you. And then also like, yeah, I wanna like make the chances of being like assaulted as slim as possible. Yeah? And like, I've had a lot of really successful and really long in-depth conversations with people before going out on dates with them. I've spent like two weeks having like in-depth conversations with people before finding the time to go out with them. Like, just talk, bro. If you can't speak with me online, why would we be able to hold a conversation in person? Because it's the same conversation. One's over text, one's in person, but we can talk about the same shit, really. And like, so if you can't hold a conversation over text, how, how am I gonna expect us to be able to have a conversation in person? Safety first, please get to know the people you're meeting up with. And then when you do meet up with them, meet up with them in a public space. Those are the, those are the rules. Like, oh my God, I can't, men? men, right? Just, <laughs> anyway, I think I'm gonna leave this one here. Um, I hope that you have enjoyed. Don't forget to leave a like and subscribe, comment, all of that good stuff. A massive thank you to my Sprout and Above patrons whose names are up on the screen right now. And a huge, huge thank you to my Kiwi Cat patrons. Harry, Bobby, Sparrow, Josh, Mandy, Ikazel, Jessica, Eldo, Danielle, Anoli Like Cannoli, Elias, Apollo, Taylor is Trying, Boston, Chris, Amelia, and Anu. I love and appreciate you all so, so much. Thank you so much for joining. If anyone else would like to become a patron, you go to patreon.com slash Savvy Cat. I'll click the top link in the description. For as little as one pound a month, you get my videos a day early as well as podcasts a week early. And then for three pounds and up, you get things such as outtakes, bonus mini podcasts, Podcast, live streams, vlogs, and more. Don't forget to follow me on Instagram, the Queer Kiwi, and Twitter, that Queer Kiwi. I hope that you enjoy the rest of your day. Stay safe. Keep fighting. I love you. Mwah. When you close your eyes.